In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can do animation for character level styling on the Fusion page of Resolve 17. Here I'm using Resolve 17.4.6, but you can use an earlier version. Now in this example here, I have an adjustment clip on my timeline right above uh, on the second video track here. And I have some text Resolve 17 on the Fusion page. And when I play through this, you'll see that the 17 gets larger. And it actually animates up. I can play that through as well. So I did that on the Fusion page. So I'll left click on that. You can see here that I did that, accomplished that by enabling the character level styling in the text box here by right clicking and going to character level styling. So right now we'll start over from scratch here. So I'll remove this adjustment clip. And I'll drag one from my media pool here onto the timeline, and then I'll click on the Fusion page here. And I'll just adjust things here a little bit, scroll down here, and I'll add a text plus node, and merge that with my media in. And I'll put the text plus node in the first viewer by hitting one on the keyboard. Then I'll come over here to the inspector and add my text. And now to enable the character level styling, you right click in the text box, come over here and click on character level styling, and that creates a modifier. So you can come up to the top of the inspector and click on modifiers, and you'll see it. Now you're not going to see much of anything until you have something highlighted, some of the text individual characters highlighted. So character level styling allows you to individually change any of the characters. So you could, I'm, in this example, I'm just going to highlight the 17 by left clicking and holding and dragging doing a box select, and that selected one in seven. You can see the little green lines around it that shows that it was selected. So come over here and make sure I'm in the modifiers. Now to enable the animation, you can either right click right here where it says right click here to animate character level styling and click animate, or you could also just left click on the keyframe button there. So that turns red, so now it's enabled and also uh, keyframe has been created. Now for this to work and smoothly animate, there seems to be a bit of a quirk with character level styling that if you want to animate it, you want to start with the last frame that you want to change it to. So if you want it to go from small to large, come over to so right here, I'll go to, I went to frame 43 and I did the animation small. So now I'm going to make it larger. And that's going to be my end result. So at frame 43, it's going to come up to this size. So now I can go back to the beginning. I want to create another keyframe. And then I can put it back to its default size. So now if I scrub through the footage, you'll see it's slowly getting bigger and up to the size that was intended. Now if you do it the other way around, which I'll demonstrate now, you'll see that it acts differently. So I'll create another, another tech plus node here. I'll put that in the second viewer. Do the same thing with the text. Now I'll make sure that I start at the beginning at zero, at frame zero. I will right click, choose character level styling, go to modifiers. I will create my first keyframe. Highlight the characters that I want to change. So this is their default size. And then I'll go up later. Now I'll increase the size of the text. But now if I sc scrub back, you'll see that it's not gradually changing in the right. And just all of a sudden it'll shrink down when I get to the beginning. Now you can now modify size here. Just kind of tweak it around, bring it back to the size you want. And now if you go through, it will animate the same way. So you can start off at zero, but you do have to change whatever parameter you're animating at the zero point to get to actually smoothly transition from one to the other. I'm not sure why this is, but it does seem to be a quirk. But as long as you keep that in mind, you should be able to do your animation. Now you can also do, you can also do transforms in 
character level styling to have characters come, say, from off screen and back onto screen. So I'll show that here with another text plus node. Put that in the second viewer. And here I'll just do three letters, A, B, C, and I'll make them a little bigger so you can see them. So now we'll right click, go to character level styling. And then again, I will go to the point I want them to change to their full size. So say at 50 frames. So first I'm going to left click and drag and select the first letter and make sure the box is only around one. If you wanted to animate two different letters, you could do that. But here I'm just going to do one at a time. So I'm going to make sure that just one is animated. So then I'm going to enable the keyframing. And I'm going to switch to the shading tab. And under there you've got position. And here you can change the position of the character. So I'm going to do the offset X. And I'm just going to move it off to the side. Now if you notice, the selection box doesn't change. And that won't change. So you'll actually have to keep that in mind when you want to bring the character back to the center. And now I'm going to do it for each of these characters. So now I'm going to left click and select just the A and do the same thing. I'm going to change the X offset and move that all the way off to the left. And then I'm going to choose just the middle character here. And I'm going to change the Y this time and move it off the top. So now I'm going to go back to the beginning, go back to frame zero. And I'm going to select each of these. So I'll start off the left here. And even though the character is not there, the, um, the box still stays in the original position. So that's what you have to animate from. So you select that original box here. I'm going to switch to shading. And you can see there, you see the value of what it was changed to. So now I'm just going to zero that out. So it goes back to the center. Make sure that's zero. And I'll select the middle one, B. And you can see the Y has changed, so I'll change that to zero. So it's back at the center. And do the same thing for the C. Make sure that's just selected. Double click in the offset X, change that to zero, hit enter. So now all three of them are back at the beginning. Now that I didn't go way back to zero, I'm at frame one, but that's fine. So now if I go forward, you'll see that their positions are animated. And I made it back. So kind of that's the main thing is that it's probably best to do your last frame animation first and then go back to the starting point and do the finish change the last value. Or if you are going to start from zero and go off to another one, just make sure when you're at zero, you change the value. You can just change it and change it back and that will make the animation actually run and not do that little... Uh, interpolate between the two positions instead of just being at one like in this example before where it was just one size and all of a sudden in the last frame switch to the smaller size so by doing these steps you'll allow your animation to uh, flow through and not be just from one frame to the next so hopefully you found this video useful and i thank you for watching